Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Paul Rickardson. I'm the Dean and I'm a professor at the School of Business at Reykjavik University. And I am going to talk about big data and what I've called the death of free will. Free will, if you look at the concept as it has been defined uh, throughout history in philosophical terms, uh, it basically states that the doctrine that the conduct of human beings expresses personal choice and is not simply determined by physical or divine uh, forces. Uh, and this has been the guiding light behind the definition of free will from, uh, from antiquity, that we as rational beings, that we define our own destiny, so to speak. Uh, we define and we decide on whom to marry. Uh, we define uh, and identify and choose between different products, uh, choices on the free market. We uh, decide on whom or what to believe in. And uh, we decide on where to go. And in a democratic society, then we decide uh, whom we will vote for. Now, expressing this a bit differently, we have uh, us here, rational agents that uh, are governed by free will. We make choices that exhibit themselves in a certain type of behavior. And this behavior has a certain outcome. That we vote for a certain candidate. We choose a certain product. Uh, that we uh, believe in a certain god or deity, or so on and so forth. Now, stakeholders in society have always, throughout history, tried to influence our choices. Uh, we have uh, missionaries uh, preaching about a certain god. We have advertisers. We have companies uh, trying to influence our behavior to make certain choices and choose their products or services. We have the government. Who, uh, that try to influence us to behave in a, in a certain way depending on the political system or, or the issues that the politicians and the government wants to implement. Uh, so that's not something that's new in uh, today. However, what is new is that we have big data. Never before in the history of mankind have we had uh, as much registration of data going on in society as we have today. And this is not just transactional data in business. This is data about how we feel, how our bodies uh, perform, uh, our uh, location, our movements, uh, our, um, our, uh, uh, what we write on the internet, all our interaction with social media how we interact uh, online, how our friends interact online, how we interact with uh, organizations uh, around the world, and so on and so forth. All of this is registered and stored uh, in a certain way in databases. Uh, and it is accessible and analyzable for uh, stakeholders that either own or command or uh, have access to this data. Uh, this changes the picture somewhat. Take a look at this. This is Cambridge Analytica. Uh, Cambridge Analytica is a UK-based company that uh, sells their services, uh, analytical services, to mainly political parties and candidates around the world. Uh, they uh, were uh, in the press uh, du uh, during the Trump and Hillary campaigns as Trump paid the millions to assist and consult uh, in his campaign. They were also involved in the Brexit campaign where they uh, assisted the naysayers in the Brexit campaign. Now Cambridge Analytica is owned by a billionaire in uh, the US. This billionaire has uh, somewhat uh, right-wing uh, views of politics and the free market uh, and he has uh, funded Cambridge Analytica and their uh, activities from, from day one. Now, Cambridge Analytica has amassed uh, a lot of data about behavior based on social media, based on personality uh, analysis and surveys. Uh, they pride themselves of having hundreds, if not thousands, of data points about millions of Americans. So they can micro-predict certain segments of the political population and how they will react and how they will vote, uh, enabling the candidates 
to say certain things in a certain way when addressing a certain type of crowd based on those predictive analytics, enabling the campaign to target micro segments down to, uh, down to location based segments, target them uh, in a certain way that varies after uh, location. So when you open your computer, uh, a segment that is afraid of immigration gets messages and advertisements about immigration and the threats of immigration, while another segment that is more worried about uh, unemployment gets targeted with those sorts of messages. Now, Cambridge Analytica is just one example. There are lots of these types of companies about that sell uh, knowledge about how we choose and how we behave, not as consumers, but as voters in a democratic society. Looking at cons consumers, another example is facial recognition. Facial recognition software analytics and technology has evolved uh, significantly in the last five or ten years. Uh, today it is possible for a company, for a retailer to have cameras within the store uh, picturing or recording our facial expressions when we enter the store and as we progress around the store having software analyze our facial expression and map them and target them, uh, map them to certain uh, profiles, uh, enabling the persons, the salespersons, the service persons to react differently to different persons based on biological indicators on how they feel and how they react to certain stimuli within the retail sphere. And then with the aim of maximizing the chances you uh, will buy something based on the interaction with the store, physical locality, and the uh, person that is servicing you. Again, nothing we are uh, aware of as consumers, but something that the store will use to target you as a specific individual to make you make certain choices within the store that you uh, were not aware of. Uh, you would make when you uh, went in there. Again, it's the same as has been going on throughout history with someone trying to influence your behavior, but in this case we, there is access to data that makes the retailer, makes the company more targeted and more, um, and more uh, uh, focused uh, and knowledgeable about how you will react and even yourself. This has certain implications for free will. Uh, instead of having the old doctrine that we as rational beings have free will and we make choices based on our own uh, thoughts and desires uh, that result in a certain behavior, that results in a certain outcome, the stakeholders mentioned previously now have the option of not just focusing on the behavior and trying to influence the behavior, but more going the other way, looking at the outcome. What outcome do we as stakeholders desire? which candidate should win the election, how should, uh, what product should we sell in a certain space in the store, based on other types of data that were previously accessible. So the stakeholders have the option or the possibility through technology, through tech, uh, big data, to engineer an outcome through influences that we as consumers, as voters, are not always aware of uh, that we are being influenced. And this is not just consumption, and that's the, uh, the interesting and for some the scary part. It's not just consumption because there we are used to being influenced by advertisers and other, uh, and other stakeholders. Uh, today we're also talking about politics, the democratic society, the candidate that has the access to the best algorithms and the best data has more chances, higher chances of winning an election than another candidate. Uh, even uh, uh, despite uh, any differences there might be in the political views. Uh, same with religion. You, know, you can target certain segments uh, of society with certain messages based on algorithms and calculations to engineer a certain outcome, uh, which might have uh, be a radical uh, views or uh, a radical decisions by, by certain individuals. So big data, has implications not just in the transaction, the business sphere, but also in other uh, aspects of uh, dimensions of society as well. Today, we are therefore at a place where we need to be aware of these things. We need to be aware of, uh, and that might be my plea, that we need to research and focus on uh, what will happen, not just in business, but in the rest of society, when 
stakeholders, the influencers of society have access to this technology and this wealth of data that can tell them more about us and our behavior, enable them to engineer a certain outcome without uh, us necessarily knowing we are being influenced uh, as they even often know us better than we know ourselves. So physical forces and divinity, that was the old paradigm. Today we are talking about algorithms and their crunching of big data as well when we're talking about implications for free will. Thank you.